There are many enigmatic giant ruins that can be found within Japan. Super megaliths so old, a number of the largest have eroded away to a state of unrecognition. An archaeological site which at the time of its life would have undoubtedly dwarfed nearly all other civilizations upon Earth. A civilization which far outstretches the modern urban sprawl of the Japanese coastlines. A lost super-civilization responsible for the construction of numerous pyramids found throughout the landscape, some of which are said to lay beneath several meters of Earth, which has slowly consumed them over the millennia. Amongst these curious ruins are extremely perplexing, apparently sliced megalithic stones, pyramidal capstones, and also, like many places dotted around the world, legends of giants. One of the many things Japanese culture has become renowned for over the centuries is their ability to create swords. Steel weapons of a far superior quality than their rivals, giving them an edge over their foes for many centuries. One must wonder, where did this advanced knowledge of sword making come from? Was it mere ingenuity? Or descended knowledge left by a far more superior, entirely different, and far larger race of people? Many sword-making technologies, which even to this day, impress and perplex the many specialists who delve into the nature of this advanced metallurgy. Amongst these enigmatic and amazing swords is one in particular, one that for obvious reasons stands out from the rest. Known as the Noromitsu Odachi, at over 12 feet in length and weighing nearly 15 kilograms in weight, this sword was masterfully created over 2,000 years ago, with no other intention than to be used by a warrior of gigantic proportions. The Nadachi type of sword was one of the weapons of choice on the field of battle during the Namboko Cho period. During this era and far before, these swords were rarely created for decoration purposes. The price of their construction, the time and care needed in creating just one single sword, meant that most were indeed manufactured for the purpose of battle. Additionally, the cost of creating such an enormous sword would have been considerable. Was this enormous sword once used by an equally enormous warrior? Understandably, many have denied such explanations as a tangible possibility. Yet regardless, a satisfactory explanation for the creation of such an amazing object remains to be seen. Japan is a country full of ancient architecture, still to be explained by modern fields of study, with much of the method of construction indicative of lost knowledge. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient anomalies, yet after receiving a message from one of our viewers, we have yet again been provided with a lead which has resulted in us adding to this long list of ancient wonders. With a smorgasbord of previously unnoticed ancient masonry, which is still in existence at a number of ancient sites throughout the country, many of these sites, thanks to the tremendous efficiency of their original constructors, are still in use to this day. Mostly labeled as castles, these additional discoveries further corroborates a hypothesis we presented nearly two years ago, a posit of a past mega-metropolis, or now lost super-civilization having once called Japan home. Chris Gorman had previously visited Shuri Castle in Okinawa with his family, and after watching the studies regarding masonry on the channel, recalled seeing this same, now lost method of advanced stone building at the ancient site. He stated, and I quote, I'm writing to you after watching your video regarding masonry. I recognize that this same masonry was present at Shuri Castle in Okinawa, Japan, which was once made from volcanic rock. Here are some pictures that I took of the castle. Some areas were completely destroyed in the Okinawa assault of World War II, but there are also areas which survived the barrage. I witnessed rock walls and pathways that had mossy lichens, some of which taking upwards of thousands of years to form. Heavy pitting was also present upon the rocks, demonstrating significant erosion I didn't notice until recently." End quote. Thanks to Chris's message, I investigated the site along with a number of surrounding sites and found that not only is Shuri Castle littered with this amazing lost technique of stone building, countless other ancient castles and forts across the country also share these same characteristics. With the same synonymous incline found at Saxawaman, which has shown the walls to have not only been a formidable barrier for invaders, but allow them to also survive natural disasters such as large earthquakes. 
The castle of Nakagusuku in the villages of Nakagusuku and Kitanakugutsu, also found upon the island of Okinawa in Japan, is only second in size to Shuri and predictably is academically claimed as the work of distant ancestors, falling within currently permitted history. Known as the Gusuku, this title, however, is similar to that of pre -Incan. It is a name given to an unknown group, which is clearly a lost civilization. Yet, due to the forbidden nature of such investigative endeavors within academic fields, is simply a name which allows academia to dodge any explanation for their origins. Gusuku often refers to the castles or fortresses of the Ryukyu archipelago, which we have now realized are all remnants of a past highly capable, technologically advanced lost civilization with the origins of which among those who have the courage to study such unexplainable ruins, remains a controversial subject, one forbidden by funded institutional individuals from discussing. In the archaeology of the current Okinawa prefecture, the Gusuku period refers to the archaeological period believed to have followed the, quote, Mound of Shells period, all located in the Ryukyu Kingdom which the channel now strongly believes as a whole is evidence of a past, now academically concealed megametropolis, which were all the work of the same now lost civilization, and were all connected parts of this same settlement. Regardless of their controversial nature, many Gusuku ruins of the Okinawa Island are fortunately listed as World Heritage Sites by UNESCO, listed under the name of the Gusuku Sites and Associated Cultural Properties of Ryukyu Kingdom, they are undoubtedly highly compelling. The underground cities of Cappadocia, Turkey, number more than 200 and are spread across the entire region. It is highly possible that there is many more lying below the surface, just waiting to be found. Of all the underground cities discovered so far, the most awe-inspiring is perhaps the Derinkuyu city. It was discovered by accident in 1963. When a local family was renovating a house, a wall gave way to reveal a passage that led to this underground network. According to National Geographic, it is 11 levels deep, descending more than 280 feet to the bedrock, covering an area of over 4 miles squared. It includes temples, tombs, shops, living quarters, and even livestock pens. Over 15,000 air shafts were built into its design and would have been enough room to comfortably house approximately 20,000 people. The underground city has extending passages that connected to other neighboring and underground water well systems, providing fresh water. What is especially interesting regarding this underground world is the evidence to suggest that they were hiding from something terrifying. A sophisticated security system consisting of a particular build design accompanied by numerous gigantic rolling stone blocking doors that would seal the city from the inside. Moreover, its multi-layered design meant that each level could be sealed off from the next level using this same system. Just what were these people hiding from? Whatever it was, they obviously preferred to run rather than confront it. The structure was excruciatingly carved into the underground rock and is as strong today as the day it was built, safely accommodating guests such as archaeologists and tourists. Whoever built the network obviously had an advanced knowledge of stoneworking, architecture, engineering, and the local geography. Aging the structure has proven very difficult. There are no existing quarries, waste piles, or tools to examine. Furthermore, there are no records documenting its construction, or people who may have lived there. Also, unfortunately, many cultures have used the underground towns over the centuries. According to UNESCO, it is believed that the first signs of monastic activity in Cappadocia date back to the 4th century, at which time acting on the instructions of Basil the Great in order to resist attacks from the Arabs, the people should band together into small, local communities and begin inhabiting cells dug into the rock. Therefore, modern academia tends to conclude that they were likely built by the Phrygian people around 800 BC. Yet it is also a strong possibility that they are far older than this, by the bishop's instruction, they are to inhabit, not build. Therefore, it's safe to assume he was aware of their existence, rather than the person who thought them up. Some believe the underground caves were constructed by the very ancient Persian king Yima. Yima, attributed as mythological by many, is said to have had a lifespan of more than 900 years, a common feature of biblical figures as well. The Zoroastrian text Vendidad states that Yima built an underground city on the orders of the god Ahura Mazda to protect his people from a catastrophic winter. 
Much like the account of Noah in the Bible, Yima was instructed to collect pairs of the best animals and people as well as the best seeds in order to reseed the earth after the winter cataclysm. This was before the last ice age, 110,000 years ago. Hi guys, so today I wanted to share with you an amazing story. It's about a very bright 15-year-old young lad named William Godori. He has found something archaeologists have missed for centuries. The young lad often wondered why Mayan cities were not located near rivers and seemed to be randomly plotted. This is where the boy made a miraculous discovery. He realized that the ancient ruins aligned with star constellations above, and by using Google Earth, he managed to match up 117 ancient Mayan ruins with star constellations, even discovering a set of three stars the Mayans clearly held in high regards that we were unaware of previously. I did not understand why the Maya built their cities away from rivers, on marginal lands and in the mountains," Godori told French-Canadian magazine Journal de Montreal. They had to have another reason, and as they worshipped the stars, the idea came to me to verify my hypothesis. I was really surprised and excited when I realized that the most brilliant stars of the constellations matched the largest Maya cities. By plotting these star locations, William has seemingly discovered the ruins of a very ancient pyramid accompanied by a city in ruins, untouched by humans for over a thousand years. As Daniel Delisle from the Canadian Space Agency told Samuel Osborne at The Independent, the satellite images revealed certain linear features on the forest floor that looked anything but natural. There are enough items to suggest it could be a man-made structure, he said. Godori has tentatively named the lost city Kaakchi, meaning Firemouth and will be working with researchers from the Canadian Space Agency to get his discovery published in a peer-reviewed journal. He'll also be presenting his findings at Brazil's International Science Fair in 2017. However, in a strange development, a scientist, supposedly, quote, familiar with this Mexican region where the odd city-like features have been discovered, says at least one of them is an abandoned cornfield. How he knows this is unknown. We visited them, and my grad students know them quite well. Anthropologist Joffrey E. Braswell from the University of California, San Diego's Mesoamerican Archaeology Laboratory told George Dvorsky at Gizmodo. Whether this is an attempt at concealing the finds from the public is unknown, but it is sure to put a halt to a public disclosure of all of Godori's finds at Brazil's Science Fair. There are indeed confirmed lost Mayan cities in this region, two only being discovered last year. One was a completely new find, while the other was a rediscovery, a confirmation of reports of its existence. With the young man coming up with such a compelling theory, complete with confirmed hypothesis, and ruins being confirmed as dotting the 1800 square mile region of jungle, you have to wonder how specialists can shrug such positive leads off from such a bright young person without further investigation, whether withheld from public scrutiny or not. Within a place called Laos, a landlocked country in the heart of the Indo-Chinese peninsula, is probably one of the most confusing archaeological sites on Earth. We have often covered possible evidence left within countless newspaper archives, log witness testimonies, and indeed many stolen bodies of a type of ancient human far larger than we are today. Additionally, there have been many intriguing ancient giant artifacts which have been found at many sites around the world, tools, utensils, and structures, created in such scales they would be virtually useless in the hands of modern-sized people. And our archaeological site within Laos could perhaps be seen as one of the more compelling remnants, possibly left by this gigantic race of humans. However, what is seemingly the most perplexing mystery regarding this site is the aptly named Frogman, discovered at the center of this entire historical puzzle. Known as the Plain of Jars, it is an enormous ancient site, littered with countless giant stone jars, manufactured to such a scale, they are clearly too large for any practical use by humans of today. Numbering over 400 at just one site, the original purpose for these stone jars high up in these locations, if indeed they were manufactured by our ancient ancestors, is a question which has evaded modern explanation and may remain impossible to answer. 
Out of the many hundreds of jars, it would seem none were ever decorated. All remained completely blank, except one single jar. A single giant jar adorned with the image of a frogman. According to academia, the jars date from the Iron Age around 500 BC, although any compelling reasoning for this remains elusive. It is undoubtedly one of the most important prehistoric sites in Southeast Asia, and it undoubtedly deserves more attention. Who carved these enormous jars? Why make them to such enormous and thus impractical sizes? Where did the stone come from? Or indeed, how were they carried to their final resting places high up on these plateaus? Were they possibly made by a race of giants? Who is our Frogman character? Was this single image a signature, left by the original makers of these giant jars? Unfortunately, we may never know. Sardinia is undoubtedly one of the most overlooked areas of ancient interest to be found anywhere in the world. Located within the Mediterranean, it's a large Italian island with 2,000 kilometers of coastline dotted with sandy beaches. The interior, however, contains some of the most heavily concentrated ancient ruins to be found anywhere. Thousands of structures, known as naragis, litter the island. Stone structures masterfully shaped like beehives, often with domed roofs, that from inside reveal the mastery of the original constructors, with the largest and oldest of which, known as Sunuragi in Barumini. The Nuragi is a unique feature of the island of Sardinia that, according to mainstream academia, were constructed during the Nuragic Age, between 1900 and 730 BC. However, the Nuragi is not the only compelling ancient ruin to be found upon the island, that regardless of the mundane academic explanation for their origins, are indicative of an enigmatic, highly capable, lost group of ancient beings, locally said to have been of tremendous size. Known as the Giant's Graves, or Tumba de Gigantis locally, the legends that can be found still circulating within the local population tell of giants having once been responsible for these structures, with the graves supporting such claims due to their enormous scale. However, predictably, academics argue that the size of these tombs were merely due to them being mass graves, although any remains from these supposed neurogic inhabitants dated to the Bronze Age remain elusive. Additionally, many of these giant graves, which number around 800, are constructed using enormous megalithic stones many tons in weight. This use of enormous stones is strangely absent from the 2,000 or so naraji that are instead constructed from more manageably sized stones. However, interestingly, legends in other areas of the Med, such as the Navita Destudomes found in Menorca, also built with manageable stones, shares these legends of giants having once been responsible a structure built for human habitation by supposed giants using similarly sized stones as the Naraja. Gantia, found on yet another Mediterranean island called Gozo, shares these same local legends of giant builders. Is it mere coincidence that all of these ancient ruins are found within the same global vicinity as each other? An extremely ancient ritual, still practiced within Sardinia, predating Christianity by a considerable time, could hold clues to the construction of these giants' graves. A carnival so old, the story behind its purpose has been lost throughout the ages. Depicting monsters of giant proportions, often covered in cowbells and adorned with horns or goat's heads, these monsters march through the local town controlled as they go by human-looking counterparts, named the Izohadores. Known as the Carnival of the Mamuthonas, what exactly the Mamuthonas are, or indeed possibly were, is also lost to history. Although these beasts, who grunt and stomp through the town center, are tethered and controlled by the Izohadores as they go, were these mysterious beasts once a real creature? 
were they utilized for their strength and size by these Isoadoras to build the inexplicable structures still found within Sardinia? Are these widespread yet openly shared local legends passed down from generation to generation pertaining to giants having once been responsible for Sardinia's intriguing ruins a true story? With the visually stunning ancient ritual still preserved by the Sardinians, clues to the origins of the giants' graves and indeed the Nirages? We find the spectacle practiced by the Sardinians, along with their local legends surrounding the giants' graves, highly compelling. We recently covered the astonishing archaeological discoveries located within the modern-day Turkey. We discussed the unexplained ancient ruins of Gobleki Tepe, clearly a remnant of a far more ancient, far more advanced civilization than academia would ever allow contemplation of. Additionally, and the focus of the last video, the other ancient gem known as Norsen Tepe, a highly complex, thus highly advanced, ancient temple, whose contents indicated no less than 40 additional re-inhabitations of the structure after the original construction, now conveniently hidden under several meters of water, submerged during a dam-building operation. Why this operation was undertaken, or indeed why this site in particular was chosen for flooding, may become apparent with our next place of interest. It seems that some of the sites within Turkey have revealed some extremely well-preserved, extremely ancient artifacts, left by numerous as yet unknown civilizations. And although these finds have seemingly been concealed from mankind, fate is seemingly on our side. Ironically, a site of complete opposite characteristics, having not been touched or re-inhabited for untold millennia, has also been unearthed within Turkey. Alacha Hoyuk, a site on the surface perceived to have been a primitive archaeological ruin dating back to 2350 to 2150 BC, over 4,000 years ago. And yet, upon deeper exploration, an analysis seemingly undertaken too late for academia's dating has shown that the site possesses evidence of the same lost technology or more specifically, advanced knowledge of stone construction found at many other ancient, unexplained sites around the Earth, like Saxahuaman, a site we also covered previously. It must be clear to everyone that academia's dating of these sites is not accidental. Was the dating too hastily concluded? We would assume that a dating of over 4,000 years is now difficult to accompany with such advanced knowledge of stone carving and construction. Just how old is Alachahoyuk? And the same question as always, based on the unexplainable knowledge involved in its creation, who could have built it? We have, in the past, explored some truly remarkable ancient ruins that can be found within Russia. Some of the largest blocks to be found anywhere on Earth can be found within this enormous country along with many other intriguing and spectacular finds still left to be publicly documented, most notably within the notoriously hostile and extremely eerie Ural mountain range, a place long rumored to be the home of the elusive snow yeti. Left abandoned for untold millennia, laying within a Siberian lake far from modern civilization, rests one of the most scientifically baffling sites to be found anywhere on planet Earth. Claimed to be only a mere 1300 years old, yet any compelling evidence to back up such predictable claims by certain bodies within historical academia are not forthcoming. Additionally, they harvest no real logical explanation for the site's clear antiquity, reason for abandonment, or indeed construction. It seems with very little to go on, certain groups within constrictive learning practices would like the world to believe that this perplexing site was built a mere 1,000 or so years ago. Known as Por Bajin, it is a 3.5 hectare artificial man-made island located in a remote, unnamed Siberian lake between the Sayan and Altair Ranges, about 3,800 kilometers from Moscow near the Mongolian border. The site was first discovered in 1891, and the purpose of the island has still not been explained over a century later. 
it is still a mystery for quote, experts to explain, although they still strongly insist it was constructed no more than 1400 years ago. An in-depth archaeological exploration took place in 2007, with archaeologists discovering clay tablets of human feet and faded colored drawings on the plaster. These were subsequently used to date the site to quite recently within antiquity, allowing experts to say that the island was built during the period of the Ugyur Khaganate between 744 and 840 AD. However, they severely lack any clear explanation as to what their motives would have been for constructing such a fortress, in such a solitary place so far from trading routes, their own civilization, or indeed anything else of interest. As with many other confusing and as yet unexplained ruins around the world, the archaeological strata most prefer to academia's currently upheld story, in regard to chronological events, will always be preferred, and the controversial and often strong evidential datings are ignored or destroyed. Is Por Bajin a far older and once far more advanced site than we are led to believe? With the advances in technology allowing us to venture further and further into the wilderness, it is only a matter of time before a self-funded, inquisitively-minded individual gets a chance to take a really good look at this amazing place. Most people have never heard of Pereidolia, but nearly everyone has experienced it. Anyone who has looked at the moon and spotted two eyes, a nose, and a mouth has felt the pull of pareidolia. It's the imagined perception of a pattern or meaning where it does not actually exist, according to the World English Dictionary. It's picking a face out of a knotted tree trunk or finding zoo animals in the clouds. German design studio Onformative is undertaking perhaps the world's largest and most systematic search for pareidolia. Their Google Faces program will spend the next few months sniffing out face-like shapes in Google Maps. This phenomena of seeing faces was also attributed to the very famous face of Cydonia that was found on Mars. The face was first imaged in detail by the Viking 1 and Viking 2 orbiters. 18 images were taken by the orbiters. Viking 1 launched on July 20, 1976 and Viking 2 orbited Mars on July 25, 1978. The striking likeness the apparent natural formation had to a face allowed the image to quickly gain notoriety around the world. The possibility of ancient ruins being on Mars is not a hypothesis held by modern science. And it is certainly not a scenario that NASA endorses. Neither does any other space-going nation appear to have any interest in investigating the possibility. Many conspiracies have surfaced over the years regarding covert operations in search of exactly such ruins on our neighboring planets. Many claiming black operations have occurred, such as an Apollo 20 program, with some rather convincing CGI hoaxes subsequently being created. Regardless, what a number of authentic researchers have managed to accomplish by just studying imagery of Mars and also of historical knowledge of the region held here on Earth is quite remarkable. Subsequent orbital imagery of the Cydonia region of Mars have attempted to debunk the face as just being a product of light angle. However, thankfully, people did not let these debunking efforts dissuade them from further investigations of the area. Some researchers who were versed in the works of Zachariah Sitchin connected the location to the possible burial site a king. Recorded within the 10th Sumerian tablet, Sitchin had apparently translated a passage regarding a god known as Alalu who requested upon death to be buried where he would be able to peer into space gazing upon Earth forever. Although many claim Sitchin's vague understanding of the writings may have led to mistranslations, Sitchin became convinced that this tenth tablet also laid claim to the king being the constructor of the pyramids. People who knew these fragments of information actually connected a network of apparent extremely ancient pyramidal ruins resting very near to the face. These remnants of once great structures undoubtedly align with the star constellation of Pleiades. What is astonishing is that these ruins would not have been discovered without Sitchin's translations. Was Sitchin right all along? Is this really proof of ancient ruins on our nearest neighbor? The alignments are certainly compelling and must be more than just coincidence. As always, thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Kulab 
a site that I have previously covered and also personally exposed the true scale of. Seemingly, or more than likely deliberately overlooked by academia, Kulap not only possesses an enormous ancient wall, which surrounds the entrance to the site, which according to academia, was seemingly placed upon the plateau of a naturally formed hill. However, after personally investigating this site myself, I found that not only had the wall constructed took unimaginable effort to build, but that the site beyond this impenetrable fortress had in fact been backfilled with earth, artificially creating the plateau that geologists, academics, and archaeologists alike long ignored and merely assumed was selected due to natural features, were in fact artificially created. However, it is clear for all to see that not only was the plateau painstakingly created to backfill to this fortress's wall, but the ingenious entrances were also the work of a people of tremendous intellect. Many of the passageways into the site allow many to enter the passages. However, as the invaders made their way along these elevations to penetrate the fortress itself, not only were they wide open to arrow fire from above from both sides, but also by design, the passageways slowly narrowed to a point where only one person at a time could actually enter the site. However, the purpose of this video is not the astonishing architectural features of the site itself, but possibly an exposure of the true creators of the site. A group of people with characteristics which may come as a shock to some and been long predicted by others. Found deep within a cave system within the site, a burial chamber at the depth of 800 meters, a burial chamber created at this location for the sole purpose of preserving these individuals' remains for as long as possible, and also to avoid the ravages tomb raiders that have been experienced over the eons by many of the other burial sites by many different cultures. There are many wooden idols that have seemingly been treated with lost technologies and have survived the climate astonishingly well. Yet, this set of mummies could expose once and for all who were responsible for this astonishing sight and indeed its miraculous characteristics. Thankfully, although much of the ancient tombs had been ravaged by robbers over the years, this absence of mummies didn't deter archaeologist Warren Church who's worked for 19 years to save lost Pachudos and learn its secrets. Seemingly successfully unraveling its innermost protected secrets, and possibly coming face to face with its original builders, they were known as the Chachapoya, or the Cloud People by the Incas, who by this stage had re-inhabited the ancient pre-Incan ruins which dot Peru, and due to the ingenious nature of the fortress, the tremendous efforts that went into building it, and the seemingly impenetrable nature of its design, the Cloud People seemingly survived all the way up until the Spanish invasion, only succumbing to the introduction of smallpox, which the Spanish seemingly brought with them. An intriguing characteristic of these enigmatic people is the fact that they left no written language, yet adorned their site with countless stone carvings of orchids, butterflies, and jaguars. According to Warren Church, for more than 500 years, the Chachapoya cut farm terraces and villages into these steep slopes. This burial chamber, found deep within the site, shows that not only did they display great respect for their dead, but that they were of European origin, white-skinned and blonde-haired, with Church apparently stating that the mummies are of the most beautiful past people he has ever witnessed. Were these mummies the remains of the original builders of this astonishing site? Or were they like the Incas, merely re-inhabitations, although how they got there to these Peruvian hills and controllers of Kulap itself remains a mystery. Yet white mummies of a seemingly European ancestry have been found throughout the globe. Does this suggest that the ruling force we so often postulate once existed? that many known as the Atlanteans shared their knowledge across the globe before catastrophe? Regardless of their ethnicity, we find such research by church highly admirable and such discoveries highly compelling. 
While perusing the many perplexing sites we are yet to cover on our channel, we stumbled across something which could quite possibly be a massive clue – evidence left as to the method of construction of many ancient sites found all over Earth. Our channel has, for a long time, put forward the hypothesis that a highly advanced worldwide civilization once flourished here on our planet. We believe that many of the ancient sites which display unexplained architecture were left by this lost people, placed far within our distant past. And once one begins to investigate these ruins with this possibility in mind, you start to notice some compelling things regarding these amazing sites. For example, the metal clamps we have previously covered, often created using impressive mixes of alloys and somehow poured molten, could now be seen as earlier architectural examples less than the mortarless, mysteriously notched stonework, also found in similar areas all over the world, with the more precise and thus more impressive stonework seen as a later, more sophisticated method of construction. What's more, although virtually all ancient sites have been dated to the most convenient suspects within known taught history, there also exists the numerous caves and temples, hewn from the solid bedrocks, carved with such accuracy and vision, they elude recreation even by our modern-day technology. And while looking at an amazing rock-cut cave within the site of Mamalapuram, India, a site we are now convinced was left by this same civilization, a curious piece of evidence seemingly presented itself. Upon the roughly finished roof of this ancient cave is evidence left by the same technology used to not only cut the astonishingly huge Longyu Caves, but also the abandoned Langshan Quarry, both in China. This discovery, we believe, is only just the beginning of a realization that these telltale signatures are present at many other unexplained sites around the world. We have long stipulated that many of the ancient ruins claimed by our more modern-day ancestors are most likely not their actual creations. If the structure does date to this more recent age, they are usually found to be sitting upon the telltale remnants of a highly precise ancient foundation originally left by this elusive group. Who were these amazing people? When did they flourish here on Earth? What happened to them? Why did they never record how they created such wonders? Although it is easy for skeptics to argue that the caves and architecture were merely created through excruciating hard labor, any practical demonstration of this has eluded us for many centuries. Furthermore, Many of the extensive cave excavations found all over the world, presumably dating back to this bygone age, are all absent any waste, as if the machine tasked with creating these underground labyrinths turned stone to dust. And although the technology and or possible machinery tasked with the job has evaded modern archaeology to this point, it is clearly another piece of evidence which takes us one step closer to unraveling the true history of our planet. Bazda Cave within modern-day Turkey is unquestionably an astonishing place. An enormous cave system that many people simply assume is a natural formation, with select areas quarried out, subsequently used to build numerous ruins throughout the area. However, what many people have seemingly overlooked, and we presume funded academics have deliberately ignored, are the signatures left all over the stonework throughout the network of caverns, strongly indicating that this huge complex was once, somehow, hewn by ancient man. Also, and perhaps most intriguingly, is that this task was completed using a number of different advanced tools, whose marking thanks to ours and others' astute research, has also been found scarred upon many other ancient sites, some located far away from this enigmatic cave system. The stone, once quarried out to create this enormous cavern, subsequently located as having been used to create a number of remarkable precision-cut monuments, including a once-existing wall which surrounded an ancient site known as Hiron. Additionally, due to the realization of this quarried stone having been used in Hiron, 
In addition to our own previous research, we have successfully linked Basda to yet more ancient ruins, all dated to vastly different eras within history. Thanks to our channel's creator possessing a photographic memory, we have correlated undeniable characteristic similarities, connecting many of these ancient sites throughout the world. Firstly, the signatures left by advanced stone-cutting technologies, tool marks left upon the cave system's walls. Scars upon the stonework, which are present at many other sites, Baalbek in Lebanon, Petra in Jordan, Yangshan Quarry within China, and at least two rock-cut monuments within India, the roof of a precision-cut cave, and an unfinished temple known as Veduvan Coil. This crescent-shaped scarring, often of an overlapping fashion, we feel, is reminiscent of scars left by modern-day tunnel boring equipment. Yet due to the lack of in-depth research surrounding such anomalies, with these tool marks, as far as we are aware, only receiving limited attention at Baalbek and merely photographed at Yangshan, have begun to name such markings ourselves in an effort to categorize and identify such curiosities being discovered worldwide, with these now known to us as crescent cup and ring marks. The second form of scarring, found upon much of the cave's roof, now known to us as groove and ridge markings, are distinctly different in form and appearance to the crescent cup and ring marks. These rows of grooved scars, however, are identical to those found in plain sight upon the unfinished obelisk located within Aswan Quarry, Egypt. A stone monument well over a thousand tons in weight which has long been academically argued as having been abandoned where it lay, due to a fault line discovered during the quarrying process. However, interestingly, others have presented strong evidence that this crack appeared later within history. A fellow alternative researcher, Chris Dunn, argues within his book Advanced Technology in Ancient Egypt that the crack happened later on in the obelisk's life and that the monolith was abandoned before the fault appeared. Backing up his claim, he shows that details upon the monument were being engraved over the top of the location of the fault line, an undertaking that would have clearly been illogical. Although he does not put forward a postulation as to why this crack occurred, we believe it may have been due to a shift in the surrounding geography, more than likely a ground-shifting earthquake not only cracking the obelisk, but possibly due to and accompanied by a cataclysmic event, which quite possibly caused the demise of the civilization, who were liberating the obelisk, thus leaving it unfinished. But I digress. Our focus is upon the scars left by enigmatic, clearly advanced stone-cutting tools, preserved with clarity upon the erosion-resistant granite of the obelisk. These exact markings also undeniably litter the ceiling of the Basda cave. Additionally, these groove and ridge marks are also found upon the megalithic, often polygonal stonework within Peru, at Cusco, the fortress of Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, to name but a few. The third set of signature scarring upon the cave stone walls links Basda cave to another similarly gigantic, artificially created cave system, known as Longyu Caves, located within China. Once an undoubtedly immense excavation, yet the quarried stone from this undertaking has never been located. Millions of tons of stone seemingly vanished from the face of the earth. However, thankfully, the quarried stone from the Basda cave systems, as mentioned, was utilized and located. However, the civilization responsible for shaping these quarried stones at Haran were unquestionably responsible for several other sites found around the world. YouTube channel New Earth, first linking these curiously shaped stones to Nimrod's fortress on Mount Hermon, 
with Jirash in Jordan, with us continuing this trail of connecting ancient dots, thankfully due to the uniqueness of stonework. Let's compare the Nimrod fortress with this uh, historic city in Jordan, which according to mainstream sources was conquered by the Romans and they built their typical Roman architecture consisting of columns and so on on the top of the older ruins. So here they are assuring us that the Nimrod style large blocks are pre-Roman. Now, those very same blocks, when they are in Baalbek, they are telling us it's Roman. In the Temple Mount, they are again assuring us that they are some 2000 years old. In Bosnia, they are telling us they are whatever, three or more thousand years old, and of course they are built by some obscure unknown tribe of which even the name they had to fabricate. Enabling us to link the royal Kurgan in Crimea to New Earth's discoveries, and now to the ancient ruins of Haran in Turkey. Not only can we argue that this cave system was indeed man-made, but is the only site we know of that possesses such an array of these enigmatic stone-cutting technology scars allowing us to successfully link it to at least 15 ancient sites around the world. The cave itself, Basran, Haran, Baalbek, Petra, Jerash, Yangshan, Longyu, Vetavan Coil, Malmala Param, Cusco, Sacsayhuaman, and Machu Picchu, Nimrod's Fortress, and the Royal Kurgan. Possibly many others we are yet to recognize. In conclusion, the vast array of different, as yet unidentified, advanced stone-cutting equipment scars present within the cave, each leaving its own unique signature upon the stone. The shaping of these stones, unique to an unknown civilization's signature handiwork, found worldwide, used within an array of as yet unexplained ruins, academically claimed to be of vastly different ages and the work of vastly different cultures. We find it not only clear evidence of academic fallacy, but incredibly compelling. Due to the rigidity of academic opinion regarding the history of man, many sites are stubbornly attributed to civilizations that were simply incapable of their construction. Mausoleums, temples, and other structures found all over the world often carved straight out of the bedrock with such artistic vision and accuracy, they rival even the artistic masterpieces created during the Renaissance. Temples such as the Kalesh, among many others found within India alone, that were somehow carved straight out of rock hillsides with stunning precision. Such astonishing feats of ancient stonework that to claim they were created by the currently academically attested cultures, we feel is absurd. Not only are many of these ancient, unexplainable structures built with the utilization of seemingly impossibly huge megalithic blocks, but they also display masonry techniques and refined stone carving that we believe the only logical explanation for their origins is that of a once highly capable, technologically advanced civilization's workmanship. For example, our recent research surrounding the Basda cave system the confirmed quarry for the nearby ancient ruins of Haran, with a focus on the stone cutting tool marks found within, and indeed, the easily identifiable shape of the blocks built from this undertaking, we perceive as a possible missing link now connecting a vast number of ancient ruins around the world. Due to it being confirmed as the quarry for Haran, and the unique shape of the stones used in the construction of the site, 
we have been able to link this signature style of block cutting to many other sites around the globe. With the astonishing ancient rock-cut structures, found at the site known as Myra, now also identified as one of these sites, predictably claimed as tombs by academia. And although there is no substantiated written reference for Myra existing before it was listed as a member of the Lycian League in 168 BC, the stonework still existing at the site, thanks to ours and New Earth's efforts, could be seen as that of the same as many other ancient sites, also possessing these signature blocks found at Hassan, which we strongly feel, due to a large amount of evidence, as having a pre-Diluvian origin. These identifiable features most notably found within the theater of Myra, and although the flooring has been robbed out, which we presume was once polygonal, just like that of the flooring found still existing at the ancient amphitheater of Delphi. Additionally, the precision with which these pertained tombs were cut into the sheer cliff face is to us clear evidence of a civilization's work far more capable than that of the academically claimed builders, the Iron Age Lycians or even the Greeks. We suspect, like the many other incredibly built ancient sites around the world, this site was merely re-inhabited by later civilizations, utilized and indeed claimed as their work. Not only due to an absence of documentation of their existence prior to this habitation, making academia's claim to their creators an easy assertion to make, but also due to the perceived illusionary capabilities that these monuments would have lent to the Greeks and prior to them the Lycians' architectural skills. There are two necropolis of these rock-cut temple fronts found at Myra, the first being the river necropolis and the second being the ocean necropolis. The best-known tomb in the river necropolis is the lion's tomb, also called the painted tomb. This name given to the tomb by traveler Charles Fellows, who in 1840 found the tomb to have still been colorfully painted in red, yellow, and blue. Lycia is known to history since the records of ancient Egypt and the Hittite Empire in the Late Bronze Age. It was populated by speakers of the Luwian language group. Written records began to be inscribed in stone in the Lycian language after Lycia's involuntary incorporation into the Acumenid Empire during the Iron Age, with ancient sources indicating that an even older name for the region was Alope. How can academics continue to claim that such precisely cut stone structures were the work of such primitive cultures? We believe it to be far more logical to presume that these precision cut structures were already in existence during these eras, and probably the reason for the area's initial inhabitation. Who built the ancient rock cut structures of Myra? Were they, as we postulate, created by the same advanced lost civilization we have linked through the stonework to sites the world over? It is undoubtedly an incredible location, with particular identifiable features, which we find highly compelling. After many years exploring the remnants of a past highly advanced lost civilization, a civilization who after extensive study we have identified fingerprints of on literally every continent on Earth, whose identity we have relentlessly searched for. We now feel, after several astonishing realizations, that it may have been right under our nose this entire time. A civilization that no matter which ancient ruin you find yourself within the world over, undoubtedly vanished during a mysterious event coming to an untimely demise at the hands of a possible cataclysm, with many theories surrounding a great flood of biblical proportions. As most of you will be aware, there exists legends of a mysterious civilization, which seemingly shares these rumors of demise, yet the connection between them, as far as the general population is aware, has never been made. A civilization that many a scholar has concluded was not only a highly capable, technologically advanced and highly intelligent group, but was also hell-bent on world domination. This civilization is most commonly known as the Atlanteans. 
Illogically, however, regardless of the immense study of this group traveling far and wide in pursuit of this world control, we have only ever been told of them existing upon a single mystical continent, a place that has been searched for by countless people for over 2,500 years. Yet, predictably, academia staunchly deny any existence of this past culture, or indeed its influence upon a now lost part of human civilization. However, we feel this is a clue which will support our following assertions. Researchers and scholars worldwide have discussed Atlantis for many years, proposing a number of theories and personal opinions as to its past location. A theory of a single continental inhabitation we now feel has been a successful red herring, leading many a talented investigator down an inevitable dead end. Ken Fetter, professor in archaeology, however, suggested several things regarding Atlantis in his book Frauds, Myths, and Mysteries – Science and Pseudoscience in Archaeology. Professor Ken suggested, as a result of extensive exhaustive study, that the Atlanteans were incredibly sophisticated, yet perceived as an evil culture that attempted to dominate the world by force. Professor Ken portrays the Atlantean civilization as an evil and war-based civilization whose only goal was conquest, a hypothesis we feel we can not only support, but extend upon with a large volume of our own research. A Swedish scientist and writer called Olaus Redbeck proposed a rather interesting theory between 1679 and 1702. He wrote a 3,000-page treatise comprising a total of four volumes called Atlantica, in which the author attempts to suggest, and indeed prove, that Sweden was Atlantis, the cradle of civilization, and that all human languages evolved from Swedish. We do not confirm nor deny this hypothesis, but we do feel, regardless of where the Atlanteans originated from, they were not existing upon a single mystical continent that sunk into the abyss but were indeed the dominant force which could be found settled throughout the world. Through our own continuing extensive research of ancient ruins around the world, and the numerous links that we have individually made surrounding these particular ruins, technological characteristics, similarities in building techniques, and unexplained architectural advances, we have concluded that these technologies were shared, not constructed by the same group, but shared as if by a dominating force. Varying from continent to continent in style, with slight alterations present in the techniques involved in the construction of many still surviving sophisticated ancient monuments, we have found, and indeed proven beyond doubt, that there is indeed undeniable links between the technologies used in their construction. For example, the enigmatic tool marks found upon megaliths are uncannily similar. The techniques used to build such monuments, such as metal clamps, although varying in shape and metallurgy, the actual knowledge behind such advancements seems to have been shared by a controlling ruling class, who we now feel matches the known identity of the Atlanteans, the only logical culprit supported by historical rumor of their technological dominances, the only suspect present within ancient historical accounts, and although these scholars search for a particular continent, we feel we can argue were present on nearly all. Interestingly, there once existed an unquestionably important historical depiction found upon a Mayan plaque showing the extinction of this mythical advanced civilization at the hands of supervolcanic eruption and a resulting deluge. We hypothesize, and we feel quite logically, that Atlantis sunk due to a worldwide cataclysm, and although they may have indeed originated from a specific location, Atlantis was not a single continent, but the pre-Diluvian world, thus can be identified as the worldwide advanced civilization we have searched for and regardless of our own continued research, which supports the existence of a civilization that does indeed match their description, 
Clues have also been left to us regarding this possibility throughout history by some of the greatest philosophers to ever live. If, for example, a supervolcanic eruption was to occur, possibly triggered due to naturally occurring increases in solar energy, possibly a cyclical characteristic of our own sun, then this gigantic plume of ash would plunge the Earth into complete darkness for an unknown duration, possibly triggering an ice age. However, immediately prior to this plummeting of temperature, a dramatic increase in worldwide temperature would be experienced due to this belch of volcanic activity. This dramatic rise in global temperature would melt the ice caps at an incredible pace, flooding the Earth and thus giving birth to the legends of the sinking of Atlantis and indeed the biblical flood. This once existing artistic depiction of this event, created by a surviving Mayan artist, not only shows the eruption of a gigantic volcano, but a man in a boat attempting to escape this event rowing away hopelessly into the rising deep blue ocean, surrounded by drowning parties and a sinking landmass covered in ancient pyramids which can be seen behind. This landmass, according to the artist, was known as Astlan, which translates to English as Atlantis. Our theory that Atlantis was not one continent, but the actual demise of this worldwide advanced civilization and indeed the world as they knew it, which sunk dramatically, subsequently reformed by this dramatic melting and freezing over the duration of mere weeks or even days, is also supported by a clue left by Plato. According to Plato, and indeed Greek mythology, Atlantis was protected by the god Poseidon, who for some unexplained reason made his son Atlas king of this mythical land. We perceive this explanation given by Plato as a clue to the fate of not only Atlantis, but the pre-Diluvian world. Atlas being the defining individual and indeed word which could unravel this mystery. Is it mere coincidence that Atlas is incredibly similar in lexical similarity to Atlantis, and also that it is the name given to the map of modern landmasses? and indeed the oceans of our modern world? Could this making of Atlas as king by Poseidon, claimed by Plato, be an admittance to an awareness of the Atlantean's fate by Plato himself? With Poseidon deciding the fate of Atlantis, the god of the sea, earthquakes, and thus cataclysm? Has this mythical continent of Atlantis never been found, because we have already found it? Proof of their existence, and indeed inhabited landmasses, being all the existing advanced ancient ruins we so often cover here on our channel, which escape explanation, surviving above the waves. Not only has the ancient pyramids been found to have once been submerged under several meters of seawater, but countless other ruins we have covered also share this intriguing characteristic. Are we looking at the past existence of the Atlanteans every time we explore an as yet unexplained advanced ancient ruin? The instructors of these ruins, the font of this knowledge, having been the Atlanteans themselves, who, just like the legends tell of, met their untimely demise at the hands of a great deluge? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Mersin, a large city and port on the Mediterranean coast of southern Turkey, with some extraordinary ancient ruins. Named after an aromatic plant, Mersini, a genus of the myrtle plant family, a plant which has a deep and mysterious historic relationship with humans, still to be found growing in abundance in the area. A place which 17th century traveler Eviaci Libe wrote of, noting an ancient clan named Marcino Libe, presumably also named after this special species of plant. Excavated by John Garstang, who managed to examine 23 levels of occupation at the mysterious ruins. According to academia, the ancient fortifications found at the location were put up around 4500 BC, with the site like so many others we have covered over the past two years, abruptly abandoned at some point within antiquity. 
that although obviously due to a cataclysmic event far before 4500 BC, is a date argued by funded academics worldwide. Our recent video explaining our own conclusions of this being due to natural cyclical solar activity, subsequently triggering volcanic eruptions which in turn triggered great floods and a possible ice age. It seems struck a chord that some do not want resonating, with it being aggressively dismissed by a volley of objections, coming from several directions and sources. Our own thesis, based upon personal exhaustive and detailed exploration, often accompanied by our own personal discoveries at sites the world over. Discoveries never before made or indeed publicly shared. Often intriguing connections linking these ancient sites with each other. Our theory regarding their demise, however, has been attempted to be dismissed, seemingly en masse, in favor of a comet impact, with most of mainstream media, including Nat Geo and indeed the Smithsonian, not forgetting a certain suspiciously successful YouTube channel, which we shall not mention the name of, who we now perceive as controlled opposition to our own hard-earned discoveries and conclusions thereof, releasing a volley of opposing claims shortly before and immediately after our own release of information surrounding our solar hypothesis. This released within our video concerning Atlantis being that of the pre-Diluvian world, rather than a single continent, with these mainstream entities pushing an opposing theory in unison, relating to a conveniently timed discovery of a comet impact crater in Greenland. Additionally, we also believe we have unraveled, after some contemplation, their motivations for attempting to conceal solar activity as being the original causation. Yet, we will leave it up to you to decide why these ancient sites worldwide were seemingly all abandoned. Our reason for being reluctant to present a full expose of not only our discoveries regarding their motive for concealing solar activity, but also who would want to, is that we truly feel exposing such agendas would jeopardize our work in several ways. We may digress, however, if we continue our work along the same path. The astute among you may come to realize such motivations on your own. The focus of this video, however, is not solely regarding the recent attack we witnessed upon our work, regardless of the mountain of evidence we have surrounding solar activity. It does not regard the Neolith worship of the sun, a culture we have long postulated were a surviving fragment of this once highly advanced civilization, or rather, what we now perceive was an obsession with the observation of the sun due to fearful memories, rather than that of worship but rather the uncanny advanced as yet unexplainable architecture, which can be found dotting Mersin and indeed the world. Mersin, like many other extremely ancient well-built fortifications, became a part of many states and civilizations – the Hittites, Assyrians, Persians, Greeks, Seleucids, and Lagids, to name but a few. With polygonal masonry being one of the most easily recognized characteristics, a characteristics for all you amateur explorers out there to use, to easily identify sites as pre-Diluvian. Littering the site, it is a sophisticated unexplained form of masonry that is also found within Peru, Egypt, Necromantion, uncannily similar in style, may we add, although many other Greek sites such as Delphi, Italy, Japan, South Korea, Turkey, Lebanon, and so on. A method of construction left by a civilization we now feel the evidence for the existence of, and indeed them being academically hidden, thanks to ours and others' exhaustive efforts, has become overwhelming. 
and our suspicions regarding the reasons for the concealing of them, and indeed the reason for their demise, are irrelevant. Even if subsequently blaming climate fluctuations upon our planet, on human activities, is not only incredibly profitable, but also a cunning method of controlling the human population. These circumstantial factors are irrelevant to the evidence of the past existence of this extremely intelligent, clearly technologically advanced, and capable civilization. Evidence that has seen funded institutes scrambling to push specific opinions upon inquisitive minds. Regardless of whether we now realize the motivation behind the attack on our channel, undoubtedly being due to the fact that we are certainly on to something, regardless of Poseidon's trident. The undeniable links of this symbolic weaponry with modern-day destroyers, whether physical nuclear threats or spiritual depictive clues, indicators of specific human capabilities, not placed out of mockery, but a nod to those in the know, that if you watch our previous video carefully, will realize strongly supports our theory regarding the Atlanteans, Plato's clue, and academia's awareness yet concealment of such realities. These modern factors are irrelevant to our mission of unraveling the past. However, the fact that it seems that we must now tread carefully regarding the truth of ancient Earth, we do not find concerning, for indeed, we have long expected this reaction, a consequence we predicted would occur once we started to get close to a truth. A truth hidden by profiteering Rather, we find it all to be highly compelling.